All right, hey, what's up, guys? Um, gonna do just kind of a quick run through of some things that I keep in the boat that I feel like maybe they're not necessarily essentials, but they definitely help throughout the day. They make things, they make life easy. Uh, some of them I do feel like are essential. Uh, like if you're gonna go boating, you need to have them, especially fishing. So mine, you know, I fish, so mine's gonna be geared heavily toward fishing. Uh, a lot of the stuff I buy is on Amazon. Some of the stuff I've needed and not had so now it's definitely in my boat other things it's just always been in my boat so uh we'll go ahead and get started they're not in any kind of particular order nothing with um you know their importance i don't think you know these things are needed more than others this is going to be a basic run through of things i think you should have in a boat uh there's one thing that is missing that uh went with my old boat because this is my new boat but i've had it for a year so no excuses um a first aid kit so i just ordered a first aid kit for this boat waterproof i got a coleman brand just because it was cheap it's on amazon i do a lot of buying on amazon if there's something name brand i can find a knockoff on amazon cheaper i'll always try it first so let's go ahead and dive right into it so cutting tools obviously you fish you're gonna want something to cut line with i bought these off amazon you can get a two pack of them for six bucks uh they're safety scissors, not safety scissors, uh, nurses use them and stuff like that. That's how I found them is my wife's a nurse. She had a pair, I stole them. They're serrated, they work great. Like I said, they're only six bucks. So, other cutting tools, obviously, scissors, I got a bunch. I got three or four up front, this one here. Uh, the other cutting tool that wasn't in my boat that is now is uh, a pair of dykes or something. Reason being is about four weeks ago, I got hooked through a finger and I didn't have anything in the boat that was stout enough to cut it out. So I had to stop at somebody's house, knock on doors, get somebody to come out and help me. Uh, you know, almost ruined a perfectly good day of fishing just because I didn't have dikes in the boat. So better believe they always in the boat now. Uh, next is some kind of locking pliers. And when I say locking pliers, I mean like you can't get them open unless you, they lock on the bottom. They're also known as hemostats. These are surgeon grade or whatever. The reason I like locking is if you're messing with a fish, you're in the boat by yourself, you've only got two hands. So you can reach down in there, snap it down on the hook, it's gonna be held in place, and then you can either smack the scissors to try and knock it loose, or work, or not the scissors, but the, the hemostats, or manipulate them in a way that you need to to get them out. You're not constantly worried about having to keep pressure on it and move your hand. You can snap it on there and it's there. If you can afford it, I would always keep a spare trolling motor prop. And if you can really afford it, I would always keep a big motor prop. I'm shopping around for a big motor prop right now for a spare. I don't know if I want to buy the exact same thing I'm already running or if I want to drop a prop size or go up a prop size. I'm in the middle of researching that. So if you can, I would do that. I would definitely have a spare prop here. And then what I would also do is buy the kit for it that comes with extra adapters. Because chances are, if you lose your prop, it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be gone. The nut's going to fall off too. So this comes with adapters to go on with pins as well. Always take them out and make sure that they fit your trolling motor. Different trolling motors have different sizes. So I keep a spare prop and pins in here. Why? Tournaments. If I have a trolling motor blade fail or something like that, I don't want my tournament to be over with just because I didn't have an extra prop. Bug spray. Always keep some bug spray in here. Some people don't like bug spray. I like to run bug spray. But the other thing we also do that my brother-in-law has made me a believer in is thermocells. They work. I didn't believe they would work. I thought they were crap. You turn it on, stick it up there up the front of the boat, leaning up, it, they work. But I run both. I like to be able to spray this on like the rim of my cap here to keep them out of my face, down my legs, and then, of course, you've got these. Um, if you leave it sitting up there when you're running, it'll blow itself out. So you might have to restart it a couple of times, but thermocells are awesome. Now leading in with the thermocell, I have this waterproof box. And in this waterproof box is all the thermocell stuff along with some others. So I've got extra pads, extra fuel. This also is another one I would consider keeping is a waterproof sealed with a gasket ammo can. Why? It's waterproof. Yeah, your boxes in here, they say they're waterproof, and they may be as waterproof as they can be, but 
when this is sealed, it is 100% waterproof. You can test them, you can do whatever, but that is a gasket, it's not getting out there. In this box, I've got medicine, uh, you know, painkillers, uh, stuff that I need to get wet, like my 12 volt checker. This is another one I would have in a bolt. This is a 12 volt checker. Hook up to positive, hook that end up to ground, and you can check through wires. It's got a super sharp point on it, so that if you need to press through the sheathing of a wire to test it, you can. Always keep one of the, I would say this is a 100% boating essential. Uh, another thing I always keep in here is electrical tape. This roll's a little thin, so I grabbed a spare. It's going in there now. Fuel filter for the big motor. Uh, let's see. And that's really about it that's still left in here. The rest of the stuff's still sitting there. Screen cleaner for any of your electronics because it can be aggravating getting out there when the screen's all disgusting. You can't see. You're trying to get water on there and wipe it off. It's not working. So screen cleaner and a terry cloth. I usually keep those in there as well. I've got a single wrench, specific, 9 sixteenths. It is for the batteries, nothing else, just batteries. It stays in there. Keeping going with the trend of wrenches, I've got a torque wrench and a socket that fits my prop. Now with that, you're gonna need a block of wood because you're gonna have to chalk your block. If you guys don't know how to change out a prop, make some comments or something like that. I'll show you one real quick on how to check for tightness and everything like that. Use the manufacturer specs on here. If you have one of the torque wrenches like I've got here where you have to unscrew the back, screw it up where you need it, always unscrew it down to zero. That way it's not sitting with pressure in it or you will ruin a torque wrench. So that always stays in the boat. Sunscreen. You always need sunscreen. I try to wear clothing rather than sunscreen. You know, the mask and hood, sleeves, pants. I would rather do that than feel oily, but you know, you might have some people in your boat that don't feel the same way. So I always keep sunscreen in the boat as well. Some sort of flashlight. Never know when you're gonna get caught out after dark or you know, early in the morning having to look in your boxes or something like that. If you don't have illuminated boxes, always keep a flashlight or two in the boat to be able to be able to look around or to help you get back home. Tools, this should have been uh, in that group of tools, but it wasn't. Like I said, these are in no order. I'm just grabbing them as I can. This is a Hyper Tough. Now, you'll see that it's got some rivets in there. Those rivet pins happen to be the same size as my trolling motor pin shaft. It'll do in a pinch. I don't suggest it. It's what I used to do. They break a lot. They break often. But you can see this is a Hyper Tough kit. It is nothing fancy, but it will do in a pinch. It's got pretty much all the sizes I need in here. Uh, I'm gonna, I thought about upgrading and going and get maybe one of the heart toolboxes or something at Walmart and uh, keeping it in there, but they're a little bit bigger. They take up more room. I like this one. It's small and it's all I've ever needed. I use Hyper Tough because if it gets rusted or it falls in the water, I don't care. This was like five bucks. So I would have some sort of sockets and screwdrivers in there. Next is super glue. Why? Gluing up baits, you get cut, you need to glue it shut. Super glue has so many applications, it is not funny. So I would always have some super glue in the boat. These are more along the line of just helpful things to have for fishermen. Plug knocker, a plug knocker stick in particular. I've got one of the ones here that you put on a reel and you put some gigantic braid on it or whatever and you wrap it around your line, you drop it down, you bump, 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 these are god awful. They're terrible. Whoever thought this was a good idea is not a smart person. I don't like them. Don't, I hate them, hate them. Uh, this has always caused me more problems than it has helped. This is a 20 foot extendable pole that you can screw onto your line, run down there and knock your bait loose. And it's super stiff on them. This is the Bass Pro Shops brand. It's like 25 or $29. You can screw this onto a limb if it's on a limb and just snap limb and all and bring it all back to you. You don't have to worry about it. Screw it down onto your bait. I've broke hooks off of baits getting them back, but I got the bait back. I can put spare hooks on there. So I would always really suggest one of these. Spare hat. It's a dad hat. It's a goofy hat, but I like it. I don't care. I keep it in the boat in case I forget my hat 
or I forgot to wear a shirt with a hood and my neck's getting roasted or something like that, I like a big floppy hat. It doesn't take up a lot of room. You can store it anywhere, really. The next big one The next one is a sunglasses case, kind of a hard case. I don't care what it is. These are my Costas. I don't, I'm not telling you you have to have Costas or you have to have expensive glasses, but if you do, I would always keep a spare one in there. If you're gonna keep a spare one in there, I would stick what I would consider some cheapies in there. Some $25, $30 sunglasses, you don't care if they get broke or whatever, stick them in there. If you forget your sunglasses, you've at least got something to keep the sun out of your eyes. Always polarized, both pairs. But if I'm running down the lake and, you know, maybe it's rough water, I don't want my sunglasses to get knocked off, I'll swap them. I'll put mine in here. I'll wear these. Or, you know, if I get ready, you know, if I'm not using, if it's night fishing or something, I'll put my sunglasses in here, put them in my day box, and I'll leave these laying out. These can get scratched up, not my nice ones. So I would always suggest having a sunglasses case in the boat as well. If you're going to be running in some kind of cold water, cold not cold water, but cold weather or something like that, I also suggest one of these. I bought this mask for 19 bucks on Amazon, and it is a game changer, especially when it's cold. Nothing, nothing big to it, but it works, and I didn't have to spend 70 bucks on it, so I'm pretty happy about it. Might want to check them out. And the number one item, the biggie the granddaddy of them all the one you have to have toilet paper that's it toilet paper can clean wounds can clean butts you gotta you gotta do your business you gotta have it the only thing i would say is put it in a ziploc bag one gallon maybe two ziploc bags protect this with all cost of your life because if you get out there and you catch the mud butt you're going to be sacrificing socks or sleeves. Toilet paper, super essential. Wipes, yeah, maybe, eh, whatever. Toilet paper, got to have it. Now, like I said, these are essentials I feel like you need to be in the boat. They're, you don't have to have them. There are things maybe you didn't think about, maybe you guys have, I don't know. Now, obviously, you need to go by uh, U.S. Coast Guard standards. You need to have fire extinguishers, light vests, PFDs quick thing on PFDs. You have to have a life jacket per person in the boat or a personal flotation device. This is not considered a PFD unless it is being worn at the time. If it's just sitting in the boat and it does not have an automatic deploy setting, this one does, but if it does not have an automatic deploy setting, and as a matter of fact, I don't know even if the ones that have an automatic deploy setting are required, but I was told by them that unless I'm wearing this, it doesn't count as a flotation device because if I get thrown out of my boat and this gets thrown out of the boat with me, it's it, it has to be activated. So I don't know if the automatic ones classify, but I would say no. These don't classify as life jackets unless they're being worn. So if you get pulled over with four people in the boat and you've got four of them in there, unless they're wearing them, they're not considered PFDs. Check your state laws. They may be different. That's just what I was told. Now, again, this could all be wrong, but as it was explained to me and as I've researched it, this is not considered a PFD unless it is being worn at the time. So I've got extras. I've got life jackets under here with my throw cushion. Easily accessible. So again, like I said, this is not have to haves. This is things I think you should have. Always go by your state guidelines and whatnot. Like I said earlier, have all your essentials. Obviously, you need to have keys and gas and blah, 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 blah. I'm not doing the, the dumb, stupid essentials. I'm doing the what I think is best. So I uh, hope this list helps. If you guys have any suggestions of things you think need to be added to it, let me know. Maybe I'll learn something new. Tell me what you added and why. And then, uh, you know, maybe you'll convince me to put something in there. Maybe I'll say that this list is not complete at all and I'll make another video later on. Anyway, thanks guys. Take it easy.